Well, hello and welcome to Winning in Prayer Global's New Year's Eve Watch Night Service. Yes. I'm Apostle Daryl Johnson and I'm joined by... Hi, I'm Pastor Tammy. I'm glad to be here on today. Um, we are going into a new year in probably 59 minutes. I'm just trying to look at the clock. So 59 minutes, we're going into the new year. So thank you for joining us. Share, share, share. Make sure that you got your devices, um, your laptop, your uh, telephone, your pad, whatever you have, um, you can share on tonight. We are doing uh, New Year's Eve virtual. Um, I know some people are going to church. Some people are staying home. They had their service early this morning right. or whatever, but we are on at 11 o'clock to share with you um, what God has given given um, Apostle Daryl for the prophetic release for 2024, um, and we'll continue to build the kingdom together with you. We appreciate everything that you have done in 2023. This has been an amazing year. It has been a trying year. It has been uh, a victorious in areas in personal and spiritual uh personal, spiritual, and business-wise and ministry-wise. So we hope the same that you go into 2024 with a fresh outlook and a new outlook um, on um, starting in 59 minutes, 58 minutes now. Um, so 2024 will bring um, you to a, a better place, a better you, um, and a better walk with God. Hey Amen. Listen, we pray that you have your devices. Uh, share, share, share. Uh, let somebody know that we are uh, on tonight. Yes. Uh, I'm sure that we're going to say say something that will take you on into the new year, that will propel you into this new year with momentum uh, and a new focus. Uh, that is our prayer as we go uh, from, from, from 23 into 24. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God is doing. And, uh, you know, coming down into this last hour of this, this year, you know, I have been declaring, my wife has been declaring, we've been declaring it uh, down through the year that we are in a new season. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. The new season doesn't start in 24. Right. The new season has already began. Right. Glory to God. We're not waiting. Uh, we're not waiting till the battle is over, as the old, <laughs> or as the old song used to say. Right. But our new season is now. Right. Glory to God. And you're going to see when I give you this prophetic uh, forecast, this word, as we're going into 2024, that God means just that my new season begins now. Yeah. 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 So I, I'm excited about the, um, <clears throat> the prophetic release of the scripture that you gave. Um, that's going to be the foundational scripture um, yeah. for 2024. Even for us, uh, we came up with our own mantra um, to use during the year in 2023. The last half, we're going to yeah, carry we it into 2024. Okay. Um, I do have it so oh, I can okay. read it. Okay. Okay. So our uh, mantra for this year, um, hopefully that you can catch on to this, get a uh, get a, um, a whiff of this. It says, we declare it will not be like this from this day forward. No lack in our life, finances, relationships, business, ministry, and our health. That's good we news. have left the land of lack and live in abundance. And we have Psalms 37 and 25 and then Psalms 65 and 9. Read that one we, have, we, declare we declare it will not be like this from this day forward. No lack in our life, finances, relationships, businesses, ministry and and our health we have left the land of lack and live in abundance and again that is psalms 37 25 and then Amen. psalms 65 and 9. that is our mantra for the rest of this year which is 57 minutes 56 minutes and then going into 2024, 2024. Yes. that is our mantra and i hope that that will help somebody <laughs> uh, we'll say it at the end so that you can get it Amen. um but what we have to say today um hopefully will take you um um, into 2024 with hope, with um, your faith being built, with you purpose. being renewed and strengthened, 
and refreshed. Uh, we have been in revival <clears throat> since October, since yes. October yes. Um, on Winning in Prayer mm -hmm. uh, Global. We've been mm -hmm. in um, revival with several revivalists where the church is going to be, have been refreshed. The church yes. has been uh, revived. So now we got to get to going. It's 2024. Yes. So, you know, people, you know, write down their, um, what, what do they call it? Their New Year resolutions. Resolution. We're not doing any resolutions. We're going to speak the word of God over right. our life. Right. And we're going to live by it. And we're going to be victorious in 2024. So I hope that you geared up in December mm -hmm. um, because now it's time to move in January. Yeah. Hello, Pastor Sherelle. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hello. She and I uh, spoke earlier uh, today and she said yes. she would be on with us tonight. So thank you for being with us. Yes. Uh, your presence is appreciated very much. But, you know, you know, uh, it's amazing how when your life has been bombarded by tests and by trials and you go through and it seemed like, you know, you, you can't get a break and you, you know, you're asking God, can I just come up for some air? <laughs> you know, it, it's amazing how we can forget about the purposes of God mm. in our life. We can forget about what, what, what salvation is supposed to be. We can kind of forget about who God is supposed to be in our lives. We forget about the importance of prayer. Yes, It's just amazing how when we go through and, and, and life stretches us, how we forget. Okay. Okay. But I believe that going into this new year, that what God is going to do, he's going to cause us to where going through uh, tests and trials, storms that we're not going to forget our purpose. Mm. When when you don't forget your purpose, it makes it possible for you to stand. I don't care how much Ooh, the Lord. wind is blowing. Mm. I don't care who has turned their back on you. Glory to God. And we've had some people turn their backs on us this week, this year. Okay. Uh, we've had some things happen. Knock us off course. Glory to God. But because we know who we are in God, we were able to get ourselves back together, get our third win, if you will, right. and get right back to doing the purpose of God right. for our lives. Listen, right. don't 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 allow anybody to, to tell you that that you're not supposed to ever be knocked off course. Don't allow anybody to tell you you're not ever supposed to get tired. Mm -hmm. Get tired. Get knocked down, but get back up, glory to Amen. God, and get in the fight. Amen. So, so if your purpose is not tested, then you're not walking in the correct purpose. If your purpose is not tried, my God, then you're not walking in the correct purpose. So when you, when your purpose and when your walk has been tried, um, then you are walking in the correct yeah. purpose. Yeah. And so what you have to do is gather yourself, gather, gather yourself. yourself in prayer, in the word oh of God, um, gather yourself <clears throat> Um, in uh, writing down and journaling what you hear God saying yes. to you. If your purpose is not tried, then you are not walking in the correct yeah. purpose. Yeah. If you are doing something that you think you ought to do, then you uh, oh, are really not God. walking in Hallelujah. the correct purpose. So when you, uh, when your purpose is tried and you decide, I'm just going to let, let, let it be and let it do oh, whatever, my. let life do whatever, then you are uh, letting God down. Down, you're letting yourself down. So when your purpose is not tried, then you're walking in the incorrect purpose. Yeah. But if it is tried, that means that you are doing what God wants you to do. You're doing the will of God. I mean, bottom line, as they say, life is going to life. It is. Life is lifing all the time. Life is lifing <laughs> all the time. All the time. And when life is lifing, what are you going to do about it? Man, what, what are you going to What do? are you going to do about it? Man. You know what? We have to we have to be the kind of people that's going to make prayer our first recourse. Prayer is where you can gather yourself. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory, Amen. To Amen. Glory to God. Thank prayer you, is where you can get yourself together. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You you know, you know, life, life can embarrass you sometimes. Mm -hmm. But but God has giving us this thing called prayer where prayer will cover you yes and while you stumbling and bumbling and trying to get prayer will Hallelujah. cover you yeah thank you glory to god while thank you're you, getting yourself together Come on. prayer will allow you to get yourself yes, together yes it will hallelujah prayer. 
prayer is the tool uh, that I always say we need to go to first. We Glory always want to pick up the phone. We always want to maybe Hallelujah. post on Facebook about what life is going on Hallelujah. and post it on other of uh, uh, social media. Right. But that is not where we go to get what we hey, need. That is not where we go to get Glory the strength and the revival uh, that we need, the, the freshing that Hallelujah. we need. Thank you for watching Louise Swift today. Hey, shut up, Thank you, God. So we have Glory to go to into prayer. If we learn that tactic, glory, glory. Um, we will we'll be better off in our purpose. If Hallelujah. we learn that tactic, we cannot stop uh, because life is lifing and ministry is ministering Hallelujah. and people are peopling. We what have to go God. into prayer. Hallelujah. And when you go into prayer, that is where you'll get your strength. That is where yes, you'll gather yes, yourself. Yes. That is where you'll get centered. That is where you'll find um, God and he can give you exactly what um, needs to be done yes. at that moment in time. So you have to know that prayer is your first recourse. Stop calling everybody. Don't call your pastor. Pastor, don't call your friend. Don't call the missionary. Hallelujah. Call on God in prayer. Go to prayer. Now, when you start going to prayer, that shows your maturity. Yes. That shows God that, hey, you are really depending on me now. You're not depending on everybody else. You are depending on me. Yes. So go to prayer first. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, there's a time when we when we ought to have we ought to Thank have a God. prayer party. Mm. But okay. then there's a time, then there's a time when we have to mature. Yes. And we go in prayer by ourselves. Yes. You know, uh, uh, the Bible lets us know that, that Hezekiah and Isaiah prayed together. Mm. And God sent an answer. It said the, the, Bible, the Bible says that God sent an angel mm. to take care of the mighty men of valor. Right. So, so it's good to partner in prayer. Right. But then there's times as, as when, when, when Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, you're going to have to be able to have the maturity to stand alone in prayer. Yes, yes, yes. It's good to have a prayer partner. Amen. It's good to have a brother or sister that you can depend on. Right. But it's also good to be able to stand in prayer alone. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Thank you, Lord. So, so I, I, I've discovered this even in the last part of, of the year, being in prayer, uh, listening closely, not not talking so much, yeah. but listening closely. Am I in the right place? Am I at the right spot? God, show me where I am right now today. Mm -hmm. So then I don't make that same uh, mistake or make that same uh, mess up tomorrow because I, I have said that I'm very intentional mm -hmm. on what my relationship looks like with God mm -hmm. in 2024. What does it look like to him? Not to everybody else, yes. not me trying to please everybody else, but what does my relationship with God look like and so he can be pleased with my relationship Glory we've people pleased enough we've uh leader pleased enough you know we we're those kind of people uh sometimes we're those kind of people that when the um when the pastor is around we're somebody else but at home we're somebody else or in public you're somebody mm -hmm. else but we must be intentional about our commitment to God what does it look like what does our life look like to him in 2024 what sacrifice am I bringing to him mm -hmm. um, in 2024? Not just in prayer, not just in studying my word, but on my day-to-day -day basis, what does my sacrifice look like? What does it smell like? Is it sweet? Is it stinky? Is it the same that it was in 2022 and 2023? What does my life look like? Be intentional in 2024 with your uh, walk with God so that he can see what he means to you mm -hmm. um and so that being intentional shows him you know hey this is my child she really does care he really does care for me god needs caring too he wants you to uh show him that he cares yeah. for him yeah you know you we always want our, everything him to care for us so much but he wants to know that we care for him too so we again have to be intentional in our walk in 2024 listen one of my favorite verses of scripture is leviticus 6 13 and it says that the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. Mm -hmm. It shall never go out. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the priest was were to make sure that, that, that there was always something on the altar. Mm -hmm. You as the priest of the Lord are supposed to make sure that some part of your life 
or the, the whole of your life okay. is always on the altar. Right. Let, let, me, let me say that again. You as the priest of God are supposed to make sure that the whole of your life is always on the altar. I, mm -hmm. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how long you've been in leadership. The Amen. whole of my life is on the altar. Amen. Amen. The whole of my life has to be on the altar. I will never, I will never get to a place where I graduate and I and I can walk away from the altar. Listen, the whole of my life is always on the altar. Mm. The whole of my mind is always oh, on the, the altar. altar. The whole of my heart. The whole of my mind, my will, and my emotions my Lord. is on the altar. The whole of my marriage, yes. it's on the altar. Yes. The whole of me being a father, it's on the altar. Do you yes. get what I'm saying? All of my life, All glory to God. It. Every part of it. Every, every part. part, glory every to God, part. has to be on the altar. Mm -hmm. And you get in trouble when you decide I can do this thing on my own. Wow. Glory to God. The moment you decide I can do this thing on my own, yeah. or I got enough strength to do this on my own, my I'm grown enough to do this on my own. Right. The moment you decide that is when you make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Because when you do that, God will step back and say, I'm going to let you do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My life being on the altar tells God I'm depending on you. Mm -hmm. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My life you, being on the altar tells God I can't do this by myself. I trust you, I can't do it. My life being on the altar tells God I don't want to do this by myself. My Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you when you talk about that, I talk, uh, um, what is it, Proverbs 3, uh, 4, which is my 5, which is my favorite scripture. One of my favorites, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Oh. With thine heart, your heart is the most sensitive mm. part of you because that's where everything happens feelings, emotions, yeah. uh, decisions, all that happens in the heart. So, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Oh, the God. heart that you have, the one that's pumping in your body literally, that heart you need to trust God with your heart, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. Our understanding only takes us so far. Yes. It only takes us so far spiritually and naturally. Oh. So that's why you go to school to expand your thinking. When you go to school, you go to expand your thinking to move fat past yeah. your junior year, your senior year. Um, some of us get stuck and we stay 16, but we got to stay. We got to go beyond our 16, 17, 18 year old, 25, 52, 60 year old brain and trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding, thy own knowledge, thy own way, thy own feelings, mm -hmm. thy own emotions. We got to go past that because if we don't go past that, we'll stay stuck. We'll stay in the same situations. Yeah. We'll do the same thing over and over again oh, because God. we have not trusted the Lord with thy heart or <clears throat> our understanding. <clears throat> so moving past our own understanding, moving past the issues of our heart is where we need to be in 2024. Yeah. We need to be intentional with our relationship with God. So moving past us. Yeah. And you know, one of the, one of the things I, I believe is going to be key moving into this, this year of 2024, especially for uh, those that are in leadership is to make sure that you have a, a, a pastor to mm. make sure that you have a covering, yes. to make sure that you are in, that it you are, that you are connected. Yes. Make sure that you are accountable. Mm -hmm. Accountability means everything to yes. God. Yes. You know, when 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 Samuel, when God spoke to Samuel, it's amazing. I, I, I absolutely love that when God spoke to Samuel, it sounded like Eli. Mm -hmm. He thought it was Eli. Samuel thought it was Eli. Right. And see, this is this is what I want you to want you to to, to see. God gives you a pastor because until you get to the point of being able to uh, uh, to detect the voice of God, to dis to mm -hmm. to distinguish the voice, voice of God, yes. 
your pastor mm -hmm. is the voice for your life. Mm -hmm. And don't, and don't, 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 don't ever allow anybody, you know, when you say, you know what my pastor said, that's fine mm -hmm. because that's the voice for your life. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to continue to say my pastor say until I learn the voice of God for myself. Mm. Now, once I learn the voice of God for myself, I can say, speak, Lord. Mm -hmm. I can then mm. say, speak, Lord, because I can distinguish the voice of God for myself. Samuel thought that the voice of, of God was Eli. Mm. No. Eli told him the next time you hear that voice, say, speak, Lord. Amen. So your pastor's voice is the voice for your life until you get to a point to where you can distinguish God for yourself. Right. Glory well, to that God. comes with maturity. It comes with maturity. That comes with maturity. And when you are not um, allowing what your pastor is saying to you to get down into into the heart to the crevices and to what um needs to be fixed yeah. or what needs to be healed then you're going to continue to hear your own voice yeah. you're going to hear some other voices you're going yes. to hear your yes. voice yes. more than you're going to hear his because you're going to keep uh you're not mature enough to say oh well that's god speaking through my pastor right and through your pastor is where your um issues where your uh life can be blessed you have to have an ear to hear yes you have to the ear is not just you hearing you know a lot of people say i hear from god i hear from god well if you're going to church and you in part of a ministry mm -hmm. is that is it in line with what your pastor is saying though yeah is it in line with what the word is saying um or is it just something that you thought of you thought out of your own understanding as i said before oh my. so if you're thinking that it's god and it's not aligning with the word of god then you are not walking in the correct purpose you are not walking correctly yeah. you your word that you hear from god has to line up with the word yeah it cannot just be something off kilter and god i um had something written down uh, about god in prayer when you hear god in prayer it's not going to be causing chaos no it's not going to cause judgment no. it's not going to cause you to rebel it's not going to cause you to turn your back and you know talk about the church folks it's not going to cause you to do that when you hear the when the voice of god is speaking so the voice of god must line up with the word oh my listen can i can i can I tell you? Can I tell you a little secret? Just, mm. just between you and I, <laughs> you know, you can't be submitted to God without first being submitted to your pastor. Mm. God doesn't allow you to jump over the leapfrog your Man. pastor Man. and be submitted to him. Man. Glory to God. Him or her. Submission is the order of God. Man. I cannot be submitted to my pastor. Without first being submitted to my wife. Mm, it only works that way. Listen, do you know how many times I've heard men say, I'm submitted to my apostle, my pastor, but I knew that they did not care about their wife, about the feeling of their wife? Mm. The order of God is that I'm first submitted to my wife. Mm. then I can submit to my pastor, then I can be submitted to God. And I know that might sound kind of crazy to you saying, because you, you probably think I first need to be submitted to God. No, the order of God, since, since we're here on the earth, I need to be in submission. I need to be accountable to somebody. Man. Listen, I've been in ministry over 30 years. Man. Over 30 years. I don't make a decision without first running it past Pastor Tammy. Yeah. Pastor Tammy has a hundred percent voting rights. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I make less mistakes. I am less rash. Mm -hmm. I make less less stupidness. And I know that ain't a word because sometimes she has caused me to back up. Mm -hmm. She has caused me to pump my brakes. She has caused me to see things in a different way. Mm. <coughs> no. Submission is the order of God. Amen. Amen. So 
when we talk about submission, we're talking about the order of God and submitting. Um, I myself came to the conclusion at one time, how can I obey my leader and I cannot submit myself to the authority in my home? Um, which is the authority is my husband, myself, and then my children. Yeah. So I have to obey. I have to submit. I have to be accountable. I have to show uh, respect to my own leader in my home before I can do it. Before I can do anything with a pastor or anything with someone that is over us. Yeah. Um, so me submitting to uh, and me uh, being accountable to uh, Apostle Daryl has made my life a whole lot different because I thought I was you know, a lot of times smarter than him. So I would go around him thinking I was doing the right thing. And I'm being very transparent. Might help somebody on tonight. Um, and, and I was doing my own thing at times. And I would also, and it would make me fumble. I would fumble the ball greatly with it. So when I learned that um it was like oh, okay this is easier this is easier to submit it is easier to be accountable it is easier to say hey this is what's going on this is what i need to do without me just go ahead and doing it and then i come back and say i did it and he's like well why'd you do that yeah. fumbling the ball so i will no longer i no longer fumble the ball uh because i know the order of god okay listen so you since we well, since we're being transparent earlier in the week I was having a, I was having a conversation with another apostle and I told this apostle, I said, you know, I can be rash, especially behind a text message. <laughs> because, see, the, the tone of a text message can it can be deceptive. Mm -hmm. And there, I, there's been many text messages that I've received. That naturally mm -hmm. I just wanted to pop off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I would take my phone to my wife and say, tell me what you think about this. Man, listen, she has saved me from dropping and sending so many bombs and popping off right. and, and yeah. just ruining some stuff. Mm -hmm. See, this is why I'm saying, you need, you know, and a lot of men would think, I, I don't need to run nothing by my wife. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> she has, she has. Because she has caused me to see it another way. You know, I've, I've taken something to a text message to her, and I said, is, is this what they mean? Mm -hmm. She said, no, I don't think that's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. She has saved relationships. Yeah. I'm talking about ministry relationships. Yeah. All because she I allowed her to cause me to pump my brakes and say, hmm, maybe that's not. I, that's why I really don't like texting. Right. Because the tone of a text message can cause you to type something back where the relationship is ruined and ain't, ain't no repair. Right. So, see, this is why it's good to have somebody mm -hmm. that you can be submitted to that you can say, hey, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nah. I mean, that's just like, you know, with relationships and things like that. There is always a, a way, a good thing to um, sure <laughs> a good way to bounce things off of, bounce ideas yeah. off of. If Amen. you're struggling in ministry um, and you have a pastor, um, you have someone that is that you you know um, have a relationship with another minister. It's always good to talk with them and find out what their outlook is and what they've been through. Um, we have our own. We have an apostle that is over us. Um, when my husband was frustrated in ministry and frustrated with things, business. I said, that's who he would call. That's who he calls um, to say, hey, you know, can I get some help? He has another apostle friend that he'll call. Hey, this is what I'm this is what I'm going through. Um, so it's always good to have someone to uh, oh, be there by your side and walk by your side in it. Uh, frustrated and all. See you fumble the ball. Right. Uh, see you pick it up and run into the uh, end zone. And I'm talking much about football because, you know, we are a football family. But anyway, um, so that's why I'm using that analogy. But fumble the ball and then you have somebody to help you pick it up and carry it into the end zone right. um, so that you're not messed up and you're not making <clears throat> mistakes um, in your life. So in 2024, find that somebody that you can um, submit to, someone you can that can hold you accountable, yeah. um, someone that can help you just in case you do mess up right. um, on something or you need some ideas to bounce off of, which way do I go? Get that somebody in 2024. Uh, the problem has been in the body that we have stopped trusting each other uh, because of things that have happened so um so we have to you know i'm saying pray for that person uh to come into your life don't just be rash and find somebody mm -hmm. um but we you know pray about it and get somebody that you can get that help with yeah now let's get, let's go ahead and get to the prophetic 
uh, word yes. for 2024. And this is what God has said to me about two weeks ago. And it comes from Exodus, uh, the 14th chapter and the 13th verse. Uh, listen, and this is not just for the beginning of the year. This is for the whole of 2024 on in the 25 and beyond. Right. So Exodus 14, 13, it says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, mm -hmm. which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Mm -hmm. Let me read that beat be clause to you again. It says, For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Mm -hmm. So the prophetic forecast is that God is going to completely remove mm. your enemy or your enemies mm -hmm. forever. Mm. Forever. Not that he's going to remove them for a short period of time forever. and they return. He told Israel forever. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about biblical history, Israel never had to deal with Pharaoh again. Right. Amen. Israel never had to deal with the Red Sea again. Amen. God said, I'm going to remove your enemy or your enemies forever. Mm -hmm. I don't care if that enemy is, is lack. I don't care if that enemy is, is finances. Right. Uh, I don't care if that enemy is, is an enemy of health. Right. I don't care what the enemy is. I don't, whatever has had you held up in 2023, mm -hmm. whatever has had you held up, some of us have been held up for years by the same thing same stuff glory to god we get we get free we get a little relief and it comes right back yes well god has said i'm going to remove that enemy or those enemies forever mm. i'm going to i'm going to completely remove your enemy mm. you know the red sea represented transition for israel right and some of us are, are transitioning from 23 to 24 mm -hmm. Those things that had us up are going to now have to stand to the side the way the water stood to the side. Yes. Israel walked through victoriously, lack, health issues, mm -hmm. family issues, mm -hmm. marital issues, you, job issues, everything, uh, 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 generational issues, yes. childhood trauma, whatever the issue has been. Mm -hmm. It's going to have to stand to the side while you walk into 2024 mm -hmm. with victory. Yes. And God is saying, I, you will never see this enemy again. Mm -hmm. You see, this is why down through this year, we have been declaring that I will never see lack again. Mm -hmm. Glory Thank to God. God. That it will never be this way again. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Now, that's been our, our, our declaration almost uh, the whole year. Mm -hmm. Man. I will never see this enemy again. Mm -hmm. If you if your marriage has been tore up from the floor, yes. I don't care what the issue has been. God is saying you are never going to have to see this enemy again. Thank you, Lord. If 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 your if your kids if your kids if your relationship has been strained with the kids, God is saying you will never have to see this enemy. Again, thank you, Lord. Glory to thank God. You, God. I don't care if they acted up on your job. God is saying you will never have to see this enemy again. Thank you. Glory God. to God. I don't care if 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 drugs have has ran has, has has ravished your family's life. God is saying you are never going to have to deal with this enemy thank again. You, God. God promised the complete removal of Israel's enemy. Uh, so I'm going to go into another scripture, but for you saying that completely remove complete. the enemy. So life issues, health issues, all of that, what you've been dealing with, you will never see that again. Never. In Deuteronomy 28, it talks about the blessings of obedience. Uh, what happens in obedience mm -hmm. when you obey? Um, I'll go to that in just a minute. But I wanted to read 2 Chronicles 20 um, and 17. It's dealing with Jehoshaphat mm -hmm. when he had to fight against um, Am, Am, Amnon as well as the Moabites and he was fighting uh, he wanted to fight with all of his strength and all the armies and mm -hmm. everything that he had and he was fighting he wanted to <clears throat> defeat Moab and defeat Amnon, 
Am I saying that right? M9. M- 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 um, and so what his first, and what we talked about just a few minutes ago, his first thing was, I'm going to use all my strength. I'm going to use all these people. I'm going to use all the soldiers. But then um, the man of God stood up and told him exactly what the Lord wanted him to do. Uh, Jehazel in uh, verse 14, 20 and 14, it says, Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehazel, son of Zechariah, mm-hmm. son of Benai, son of Jael, son of Mattaniah, mm-hmm. a Levite and a descendant of Aspha. And he stood in the assembly. He stood among the people. He stood in front of the king. Um, and he said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, everyone that lives in Judah and Jerusalem, I want you to follow this. So then he gets to, um, you can read it for yourself, but you can get to <clears throat> 20 and 17. It says, you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance of the Lord that the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. And I'm reading from the NIV uh, NIV version, but he's saying that you don't have to fight anymore in 2024. You will not see the same enemy in 2024. (laughs) Whatever has had you held up, as Apostle says, it says, stand firm, and and you will not, it says, you will not have to fight this. Battle. Who, who was Jehoshaphat going to fight? Jehoshaphat was going to fight Moab and Amnon. Yeah. So he was going into battle, and of course they had great armies. So Jehoshaphat is looking at his Judah. And, and who else? Was it somebody else? No, at that time it was just um, Amnon and S- Sennacherib or something like that. No, not Sennacherib, not yet. Okay, not yet. But um, he was telling them, you know, uh, God spoke to the men of God and said, "You don't have to do anything; just stand." Yeah. Just stand and don't move. Don't don't procrastinate. Don't try to fix it. Just let God do it, and you will not have to see. He he told him he was going to utterly destroy him. If you read down um, exactly how they even uh, ended up destroying themselves, yes. um, Jehoshaphat yes, and the armies yes, of yes. Judah and Israel, they just stood up on the hill and watched them um, destroy themselves, and their bodies were thrown thrown all through the valley they were going to fight in. So. so so stand firm. You don't have to fight the same battle in 2024. Yeah, I, the, you know what I like about that verse of scripture, and this is God because she she didn't even know that I was where I was going, what I was going to talk no, about no. as far as the scripture anyway on tonight. <laughs> but, but one of the things that I love about that is uh, they were dealing with uh, a real enemy. Yes. Uh, these these were these were some fly by nights. They, they, they were real. Yes, they they were real. Mm-hmm. But imagine you receiving the word by the man of God mm-hmm. that you don't have to fight. No. And they were able to trust. Mm-hmm. You you mean you mean to tell me they got weapons? Yes. And they got horses. And 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 this is a real enemy. Mm-hmm. But you telling me I'm not gonna have to live now? It's natural for us to fight. Man. But you telling me I'm not gonna have to fight in this battle? Right. Man. Can you imagine the level of trust that they had to have? My God. Knowing that they're de- they're de- they're dealing with some real enemies here. Big, big Still, yes. men of valor. Yes. Like they they these are no punks. They ain't wimps. Right. But you're telling me I'm not gonna have to fight? Right. Man. And Man. it was because of that trust. That God gave them victory. So much so that the enemy turned on themselves. Right. And the Bible said that none escaped. None. The enemy made sure that none of the enemy escaped. Amen. Glory to God. Will not Hallelujah. Be with them anymore. Hallelujah. Will not be with them anymore. It says, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. So whatever you're facing whatever is going to come or may come yeah know that god is going to be with you he says go out and face them tomorrow and these were many many men not just a hundred thousands of <clears throat> men it was a sea of men and so all jehoshaphat could do he went and bowed his head and prayed and the assembly followed him and so they had victory not without even moving they stood still and god is preparing us so, mm-hmm. so that on tomorrow yes we would not have to fight we will glory not have to, to fight god. thank you glory lord. to god god is preparing us he has set this thing up so that on tomorrow i don't have to fight man 
I don't have to fight. Amen. Be, God is going to remove the enemy. Mm -hmm. I don't have to fight. Amen. I'm walking. I'm walking into the new year with victory yes. already mine. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank with a Lord. battle that I don't have to fight. Mm -hmm. I don't have to raise my hand. That's why the Bible says that I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. Because this victory, I didn't have to fight for. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And so let's go to, um, I'm going to go, I'll go over to Deuteronomy 28 um, and 1. <clears throat> I got a new Bible, y'all. I'm so happy. I'm excited about this Bible. This Bible really does help me. It says, uh, blessings for the obedience. Um, it says, if you fully obey the Lord and your God and carefully follow all of his commands, I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. So we have to stand still and let God do the fighting for us yes. in 2024. Yes, yes. We cannot move. We cannot be <laughs> rash, as Apostle says. We cannot just go out and do our own will and our own thing. We have to stand still and watch God work on our behalf. So everything that you struggle with in 2023, don't take it into 2024 with you. Leave it at the altar on tonight. Oh Leave it where you are tonight, wherever, any anywhere in your house, anywhere you're watching us from can be your altar leave it at the altar on tonight because you will not see these enemies you will not see these things anymore yeah. obedience is where it's going to uh, we have to follow in obedience so that we can see the will of god done right. in our lives in 2024 you know you know one of the one of the things that that i've, I've come to understand is that when 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 you're when you're dealing with tests and when you're dealing with trials and you're dealing with trouble and you're dealing with difficulty, you know you can sometimes begin to wonder, you know, God, why why am I going through this? Why is this happening? Mm -hmm. You know, why why does it seem like I'm the only? And a, and a lot of times it'll seem like you're the only one that's going through. Mm -hmm. It'll seem like everybody else's life is just so much better than yours. Mm -hmm. They're hearing from God. God is moving. Right. The blessing of the Lord is on their life. And you, <laughs> and you just wonder, why is this happening? Mm. Let me give you a verse of scripture. In Exodus, the ninth chapter, in the 16th verse, it says, And in very deed for this cause have I gained, have I raised thee up. I want you to hear me again. He's talking about Pharaoh. It says, And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up. For to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, he's telling Pharaoh, he's what he's saying about Pharaoh is there's a purpose for Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand there the, the Pharaoh, if you will, that's been in your life, the enemy that you've been dealing with, God has had a purpose assigned to it wow you're not just going through just to go through man you're not just going through uh because god wants you to feel like he has forgotten about you man. or that he doesn't love you anymore mm -hmm. but that he he's not listening to your prayer or that he's punishing you somehow man. what you are going through has purpose attached to it. amen glory to god man he told he said about pharaoh for this cause mm -hmm. are you here mm -hmm. i want to say to you the for what you are going through, it has prepared you My God. for walking in the 2024, Man. not having to deal with that enemy any longer. Man. You know, when Israel, when Israel walked out, they walked out with 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 gold and silver and Man. raiment. Walked the Bible says that they did not go out empty handed. Amen. Man. God used their enemy. To bless them. Amen. God is going to use your enemy. He's going to use your enemy to cause you to end up in your place of purpose. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh ultimately caused Israel to end up in their place of purpose. Amen. Your tests, your trials, your trouble ultimately is leading you to your place of purpose mm -hmm. going into 2024. I know you felt like 
you know, there's no way God could have called me. There's no way I'm a minister. There's no way I'm a pastor. Everything mm. keeps going wrong. Every time I put my hands to, to go forward, every time I set my mind that I'm going to do God's will, something happens. The kids start acting up. Right. They start acting up on the I'm job. Sure that, something happens on, with the car. Mm. Uh, my family start acting crazy. But yeah. I want you to know yeah. all of it was meant for purpose. Amen. All of it was meant for you to end up in a place of purpose. Man. God wasn't trying to snuff you out. He wasn't trying to destroy your life. He wasn't trying to make you feel rejected just to feel rejected. He was leading you to purpose. Thank you, God. So with that, when I said that earlier about if your purpose is not being attacked, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. then you're not doing it fully. You're not obeying the will of God. Glory you're not God. obeying what he's telling you to do. So if your purpose is being attacked, you know that you are following the will of God. Yes. Um, so what you have to do and what we have to do and learn to do is we do have to push through. I know some <laughs> people are like, you know, well, you pushing through or you giving God your best. You have to set your mind on giving God the best, even pushing through. Yes. You have to set your heart on giving God the best, even pushing through. Because while they're acting up over here, then you're still pushing through in prayer. Yeah. You're still pushing through and studying the word. You're still pushing through through and saying God I will obey you and so as they're acting up and you're pushing through all of this begins to settle mm -hmm. all of this noise becomes background noise you know how you have the TV on and when the TV is on you're not really listening to it but you have background noise that becomes background noise uh, the Egyptians were of course uh, God allowed the sea to swallow them up after it came over them but they were background noise to Israel uh, yes. as they started walking yes. across uh, the the land and seeing that their enemies were not going to defeat them or uh, overtake them. Yeah. So we have to again know that our enemies, that our issues cannot overtake us, their background noise. Yeah. Leave them in the background. Uh, drown the background out with the word. Drown yes. the background out with prayer. Drown the background out uh, with hearing God what he wants to do um, in your life. So don't let your enemies, the stuff um, again get you caught up get you stuck uh like you were in 2023 mm -hmm. because it does it, it will make you uh stay in one place yeah you just tread water yeah so you stop know, treading we don't you, have to tread water you know you know we had something happen uh back in june that knocked both of us just 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 we, april, april. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. just sucker punched us mm -hmm. naturally yeah. and spiritually Man. And I remember when it happened, I, I, didn't, I didn't tell her this immediately, but I remember when it happened, I remember hearing the enemy say, how could this be happening and you're an apostle? Mm. Oh, mm. God. See this, see, this is why you need, to, you need to make sure that you have some maturity and you mm -hmm. have uh, uh, your footing in God mm -hmm. and you have a prayer life. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as the enemy said that to me, the Holy Ghost rose up in me Amen. and said, it has nothing to do with being an apostle. Mm -hmm. this, is just, this is just about life. Amen. Glory to Amen. God. Amen. So, so, as, so as, as quick as the enemy came, God came to free me. Amen. Glory Thank to God. Lord. Now, Thank he didn't God. take the sting of, of the pain away because of what had happened. Mm -hmm. But that turbulence in my mind of why is this happening and I'm, and I'm an apostle completely took that away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because you're saved doesn't make you exempt from life. Mm -hmm. And you have to get to a point to where you understand, as they say, life is going to life. And it has nothing to do with you being a pastor. Keep going. Nothing to do with you being a leader. Nothing to do with you being an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Your purpose, when God has attached purpose to your life, mm -hmm. you you may be hit in any kind of a way, right. but it doesn't mean that God has abandoned you right. because life happens. Man. Man. Very true. I'm going to read um, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 and 7. It says, the Lord will grant the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. Oh my. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. So it's going to be uh it's going to be split up. They're not going to uh be able to uh oh go out and come in the way they uh 
They won't be able to go out the way they came in. They got to go a different way. They got to come at you a different way. Um, they got to flee and not be, you oh not see them at all, as the scripture God. says. So they will not have victory over you. But you got to believe, you got to have trust, you got to have hope <clears throat> that God is working for you. And I always say he's working behind the scenes yes. for me, for you. Um, and you got to believe that. You got to stand in that gotta you got to trust that that he is working behind the scenes for you even the good day as well as the bad days he is working <clears throat> behind the scenes for you on and then i had uh psalms 37 and 7 it says be still before the lord mm -hmm. so if you be still and let him work and not speak and not read rashly do things and Hallelujah. do your own will then you will see the hand of god work in 2024 your enemies will no longer be seen you won't see the same stuff but you got to be still you got to know that it's for working for your good i know we say that but how do many really know that that, that it's working for our good it's working for our purpose it's working for us to see the manifestations of the blessings of God in our life so you got to you you in 2024 got to look differently act differently and see differently yeah. and definitely hear differently yeah i mean how do i and, and I, I see we have like 10 minutes left mm -hmm. how do i how do i trust god enough to be still mm. hallelujah thank you lord how do I trust God enough to be still? Thank you, Lord. How did Israel, with the threat of Ammon and, and Seir and Moab, how did they trust God enough not to fight? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, that's trust. You might say that's trust at another level. Amen. No, that's just trust. It is. That's all God wants us to do is just to trust him. Mm -hmm. How do I trust him enough to be still? Mm. I just trust him. Mm. I just trust him. Thank you, Lord. I just trust him. Thank I don't Lord. move. I have to learn not to waver. Mm. I have to learn not to vacillate in faith, out of faith. You know, there's a portion of scripture where the, where, where the man said, I believe, but help my unbelief. No, we, we got to get past that. Yes. Where we just sit down and I'm trusting you, God. Mm. Maybe taking a little while. Doesn't look like it's working, but I'm trusting. I'm being still. I'm being still. I'm trusting. You. I'm being still. Kids are still acting up. Mm -hmm. Marriages, marriages is not looking like it's supposed to look, but I'm gonna be still. Mm -hmm. Finances aren't right, but I'm gonna be still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I gotta trust him enough to be still. Man, I got it. When um, when David was in in the cave running from Saul, yeah, his he, even though he was. You know, fighting and help uh, making sure that the people even around him were taken care of. Mm -hmm. He was still, still in in waiting for God to tell him what to do. Mm -hmm. He was always waiting for instructions. <clears throat> he never ever went out on his own and did it, and then had to come back and try to figure it out again. He was still be still before the Lord. Yes. So be still means not talking about it, not um always thinking about it, not always telling someone about can't, can't it. Rehearse it in you our can't mind keep over rehearsing. And over. If I would have did it this way, if I, I should have done it this way, well, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And those kind of things. It says be still. So your heart and your mind must be still and wait for direction, yes. wait for what God is going to bring to you in your time. Um, I know that we said our declaration at the beginning, but I'm going to say it now. Okay. Um, it says, uh, this is our, this has been our declaration actually since August of last year of 2023. It says, we declare will not be like this from this day forward. No lack in our life, finances, relationships, business, ministry, and our health. We have left the land of lack and live in abundance. Psalms 37 and 25 and Psalm 65 and 9. And we're getting ready to go into another year. I do want to talk about what's going on for us in January. We are going to be in Tennell, we'll Georgia. Pray first. You just pray first. Oh, you want to? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll pray. I'll, I'll say okay. a short prayer. Okay. Uh, and then you can say a short prayer and then we'll end with this. Okay. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, thank you for 
this watch night service, God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness, God. Thank you for being God over in our lives. Yes, Lord. We thank you, oh God, for your promise. We thank you for your word. Thank we you, thank Lord. you that your word shall never return void. We thank you that your word yes, can God. be depended on. Yes, we Lord. thank you, oh God, because you said in your word uh, uh, that the that the silver is yours, that the gold is yours. You said in your word that you would do exceeding abundantly above all that you, uh, mm. we can ask or think. God, you said that no good thing will you withhold from those that walk up right before you. We yes, just thank God. you for the promise and it's in your word. Yes, Lord. Thank you, oh God, that the promise of your word is carrying us into 2024. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord, that this enemy or these enemies, mm -hmm. that we'll see them never again, God. Amen. Thank, thank you. you God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God, we thank you for Glory this time. We thank you for the people of God that are online, the people Hallelujah. of God that will watch the replay. We thank you, God, for the prophetic release of not seeing the enemies anymore Hallelujah. in Exodus um, 14. We will not see our enemies anymore. We will not see those things that we faced in 2023. We will not face them anymore. We will not have them. We will not let them bind us. We will not let them, let them keep us stuck. Hallelujah. We will not walk in them again. We won't Glory even give God. them any attention attention will keep them Hallelujah. as background noise they'll be in the background while they watch us walk forward as our issues say oh they they're not going to feed into this anymore so god we thank you thank for you. that we thank you for us not having to see the same enemies we ask god that you keep us still that you keep us with our mind open and our ears open and our heart open to Hallelujah. you that we will follow your will that we will walk in our purpose and not get off track and even if we get knocked off track god will come to you in prayer we won't call anybody we won't write a note <clears throat> we won't do anything that's not like you god but we will come to you and ask you for direction god we thank you for this time in 2023 whether it looked bad looked ugly or it was good and not all good we thank you even for it. we oh, thank you God. for your grace Hallelujah. and we thank you for your mercy in this time in 2023 as we go into the next year god that we will take you with us everywhere oh, we God. go everything we do we will Hallelujah. involve you in jesus name Amen. Well, we thank you for watching us on Amen. tonight. Amen. We thank you for being with got, us. Those got a text message from Mama G. Those that um, <laughs> those that are watching with us, um, with, that you're watching with us tonight for our, our virtual um, virtual watch night service. So I just want to talk a little bit about what's happening in January for Winning in Prayer Global. We're going to be in an in-person gathering January 13th in Tenno, Georgia. The flyer is on the website. Uh, we'll be with Apostle Yancey and her uh <coughs> Excuse me, and her uh, church empowered, uh, empowered to serve ministries. That's where we'll be. Uh, go to the um, Facebook page and see the flyer. Registration is twenty five dollars up until January six. If you're going to come in and pay at the door, it's going to be thirty five dollars. But come and meet us in Tino, Georgia, at Empowered to Serve Ministries um, with Apostle Yancey. We are excited. We cannot wait. For this time, it's going to be prayer. It's going to be learning. We're going to worship together. It's a one-day uh, gathering. Um, hopefully, we'll extend it to another day. Uh, you know, coming in the next years or so. But it's going to be in Tino, Georgia, Empowered to Serve Ministries, January thirteenth, starting at eight a.m. We will have breakfast. Um, and they are they are ready to serve breakfast and to give you the hospitality um, that they have. And we are excited I'm, I'm about it. I'm being told that they can cook. Right. <laughs> We're being told that they can really cook. We're waiting for some biscuits and bacon or whatever they're going to give us. But we are excited about uh, being in Tino, Georgia on the 13th. Mm -hmm. um, so come and join us January 13th at 8 a.m. if you are in that area. Yeah. So I don't know what time is it. Let's see what time it is. 11.58. Oh, we got two more minutes 
to be with <laughs> be with you guys. So I'm um, oh Whip TV um, is growing. We are really excited about Whip TV. We got like three, four new ministries before the year even ended um, joined us. So that you'll see new ministries coming in January, new ministries in February. So we are excited about that. You want to see uh, your ministry uh, on? Then come and uh, talk That's to us about Whip minute. TV. <laughs> We got one minute, so um, <laughs> so we'll have one minute to say Happy New Year to you guys. We thank you for all of your support um, down to down through twenty twenty.